Morning traders, Paul here with Gamma Edge. Today is Friday, the 30th of December, end of the year, end of the month, end of the quarter. Pretty exciting. Let's get started. Pause your players here, read to the bottom. If you agree, hit that play button. Summary for today, short-term model has gone to a new long. It's been complete chop, as everyone knows. Uh, that is the nature of trend following. Uh, Long-term model remains in a cash or short position. Uh, the slopes of the ribbon are downward. The SPX positive goalpost, uh, what we call gamma exposure, uh, positive gamma exposure is up at 4,200. This has moved up from 4,100. Uh, this is calls going in, uh, puts being closed. Uh, minus GEX has moved up, no surprise here, to 38.35. It is the dominant negative strike or put dominated strike that is coming off today. Uh, short calls, long puts, uh, all are vaporizing at 38.35. And this is uh, going to probably be interesting to see how this, this plays out. Uh, as most of you are aware, JPM rolls their largest hedge fund today. And we'll cover the high level implications of that at the end here. Just want to go over the market model, uh, long-term downtrend. We've got all these uh, moving averages here. They're parallel, pointing down. We've been in a downtrend for a while. We will remain in a downtrend until this white bolded CT, cumulative tick, pushes above and holds for a duration of time. We're not there. This big yellow line across here is the 38.35 strike. Uh, JPM rolls this today. We have been literally not getting too far from this uh, and there's a reason for that and if you haven't been paying attention uh, you should because this is why we all are paying attention to this because it does have an influence on the overall markets as i said chop uh, one day up one day down up two days down one day up so who knows what's going to happen today uh, we could continue north which would be a good thing for the bulls or we could chop even lower uh, which would be a good thing for the bears. So just play it accordingly. Three-day weekend coming up. Delta neutral is always a good strategy. And uh, just collecting some three-day time decay uh, might be uh, the order of the day. Key levels, as I said, 4,200 is the new right goalpost. 3835 is the left goalpost. Uh, no change here with call open interest or put open interest. Expected move within range. You can see some things have moved around over here on the PM side of the equation. The combo is what we pay attention to and, and clearly this is a shift upward. Uh, calls going in, puts being closed up here, shifts the structure upward. That's actually constructive for the bulls. So uh, we don't have a lot of supporting data for that, but when we do see this uh, in back tests, it uh, generally suggests that uh, within 30 days we will see a, a positive move. The PM settled complex, very tight transition. Here's at 38.35, everything turned on. You can see where we are, 38.50, that's where we closed. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. I want everyone to take note. We are starting to see positive or call dominated deltas start to appear. That is necessary, not sufficient, but it is necessary to move north. And uh, we, we wanna see that continue to occur here. So we do see a little bit of thawing in the PM settled complex. Taking a look at the zero DTE, here's what's coming off today. And you can see very dominated here by the 3835. All these short calls are, are gonna get rolled. Gamma level is huge. Delta level relative to everything else in the structure, huge. Look to see though what's coming off down below us. We have actually a lot of positive deltas coming off. And so it's gonna, we, we need actually all of this to, to come off, which is good. These are uh, in the money puts and uh, that'll be constructive to the north. Not so sure about here to the south and that these are the mixed messages that we're getting overall in the overall change in structure. The combo, which is the AM and the PM, uh, looking pretty good. Uh, still very dominant to the downside not very well formed to the upside, but we are noticing this pocket in the deltas uh, that all the way up to that 3,900 strike that we wanna pay attention to, suggests that we could easily park into this range into the overnight, uh, into the three-day weekend. So take a look at these, po these different pockets here and uh, just pay attention as we go forward. If we turn off everything and just look into what's coming off next week, 
So I've isolated Tuesday through Friday here. Kind of that same thing. It's, it's interesting because these nodes uh, persist, which is good. Um, deltas uh, are, are negative down to here. So we're starting to see some thawing, which is interesting. Remember, all this vaporizes next week, but it's the sequencing of the vaporization that's, uh, that's going to matter. Uh, below that 3820, um, gammas are uh, going to play a, an increasing role if we, we drop into that zone. But I will note uh, these are the short-term gammas for next week. And, you know, it suggests kind of 3820, 3800 would be the low end. And then as we push north here, you can see that 3925 would not be out of the question with, with the different pockets in here. So um, since we're very close to being balanced for the entire week, uh, it's neutral. And this is a little differing opinion right now than what I had a couple days ago. But the data is starting to show calls. Um, Short-term calls are going to be coming off, but uh, the, the process, the gamma going into next week is, uh, is, is starting to support an upside move. So we'll just want to pay attention to that. Um, not much to say here. Uh, 39 or 38.35 is the, uh, the new minus GEX level. You can see the 3,800 will take that back uh, as soon as this vaporizes today. So I would imagine that on Tuesday, this will be the new level, just given everything that we have right here. 3,900 right here. You can see we've had a lot of calls build in since yesterday. Here's that new 4,200, um, which has moved up from, from the 4,100, which is right here. You can see that actually 4,000 most likely will play the, the next role here. The, the key takeaway that I want everyone to, to realize here, though, is that you know, a lot of this is short-lived, as you just saw right here, right? So you see a lot of short-lived things that are going to vaporize next week. So this structure is going to change, and we're going to want to pay attention to that. So in general, just be aware, we're right at transition. Uh, we're, we're just above in this area. We've got a 3,900 line, which is big. Uh, it all changes when this comes off today. So let's talk about today. Let's talk about the, uh, the JPM roll. So uh, for those of you who haven't been paying attention, JPM has three funds. Uh, the one that is the, uh, the biggest um, is, the, is this one here, uh, JHEQX, uh, rolls today. And uh, these actually roll every three months, as you can see here. And there's three funds, so they're staged one month apart. So we get at the end of every month, we get a new new roll. But you can see the relative magnitudes of these things are um, uh, are fairly fairly different and uh, have less of an impact. This is the biggest one for today, uh, down considerably from what it was uh, even a year ago. It's now, according to the website this morning, uh, just under 15 billion in uh, size. So people have been bailing out of it. But nevertheless, it's notionally, it's still a large amount, 38,000 or so contracts. Um, what they do, and this is across all three, is they pick from wherever the spot is at roughly 2.30, 3 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, they will pick a spot that's about 5% below that, uh, a strike, and um, that'll be a long put. And then they go out 20% below that, or fi about 15% below wherever this uh, this long put is, and they sell a put. And this becomes a, uh, a downward uh, put spread, and then they collar it uh, by selling a um, out-of-the-money call here, which is about 3 to 5%. Uh, recent history shown it upwards of 6 but the prospectus lists, you know, 5.5% or so. So what they do is they use uh, the uh, revenue received here from the sell of this call to pay for this, and it becomes a neutral. There's, we're right on the zero line here. becomes a neutral cost uh, to the overall fund. Now, they are long the SPX, right? So when you basically take a structure, a hedging structure like this, and you overlay it with just the normal P&L, you get this. So in this area right here, there is no compensation. It's flat. So if you are long in this area, that's this right here. And then what, sorry about that. And then what happens is, is that above that 5%, you're capped, your gains are capped. But below 5%, uh, you are effectively flat on the market. So if we look at that, this is the flat on the market part. Uh, here's your exposure to the market. So you can participate in 3 to 5% upside, 5% downside. 
and then above that 5%, um, you don't uh, get any market participation. And they put this on and they roll this every quarter. So here are the strikes. Uh, this was what was placed at the end of September, uh, 44,500 contracts, and these are the strikes, and this is why that 3835 has been just consuming all the oxygen in the room. So this is what's rolling today. Now, looking at the chains and just tracking this uh, daily like we've been doing, it, we actually believe it's closer to about 42,000 contracts. Uh, they, if you read the prospectus, they can use futures to do some of this, and they've been uh, getting some liquidations in the account. So they don't want to be too unbalanced, and as a result, they do uh, um, you know, keep, keep things in check. Uh, January is the next one. 13,800 contracts was, uh, was put on at the end of October. And so you can see in terms of overall size, uh, we've got quite a difference. So 3660, uh, 4145 are the two strikes that we're, uh, we're paying attention to uh, into January. So that 4145 could certainly be there. So here's where we are today, right? So uh, this 3849 is where we're starting the day, this line right here. We're a little bit in the money um, uh, for these, uh, these short calls at 3835. Uh, the blue line represents, it's called the terminal uh, P&L, it's where we're going to collapse and you can see that they're going to be a little bit in the money uh, as, as we go forward here. So this is the existing structure that exists today. You can see it's relatively flat on the overall um, uh, chains and the value here is very, very low. So a fall here is just going to be a nothing muffin in, in all intents and purposes. Why this is important is the delta. So I've highlighted this. And when you put on a short call, you put on a long put and a short put, you get a delta structure that looks like this. And we're sitting right here at this uh, 3849, 3850 level, so we're above this. And what happens throughout the day today is that above this 3835, deltas collapse towards minus one. Um, so this is the minus one level or minus 100. And what this basically means is that JPM on their side of the table are getting shorter uh, and the dealers are getting longer. So all things equal, the dealers have to sell to hedge flat. Now this is ignoring all of the other structure that's going on here, but it's important to realize that the pressure from this, this is a fairly large magnitude as you saw in those, those gamma charts, uh, it's gonna continue to push us down. And the same thing happens on the, on the other side. Below 3835, the deltas collapse towards zero uh, from the from the negative side, this is the negative side of delta, and the dealers are on the other side of the table. They're they're collapsing towards uh, plus zero, as we hit expired, and so the dealers tend to buy, and that pushes us back up towards the pin, and that's why we've been in pricing for the last week and a half or so. We've been bouncing around this thirty eight thirty five level, so that explains the mechanism and why we need to pay attention to this, especially when we have these single expiries coming up or single rolls coming up because they do move the markets. They do influence the markets. So the so what here is now they're going to roll. What, what's that going to look like? Well, again, going back to the structure that we did here, right, where you got a 5%, 5%, and a 15%, um, you end up with something that looks like this, a 5%, 5% down and then a 20% uh, down off a spot or 15 below wherever that long put is. And so here are our best guesstimates given this morning's data. This was the uh, 3850 uh, as the value, the center value to calculate these. Actual movement today will we'll move these strikes. So don't hold us to saying, oh, Gamma Edge said, you know, it was going to be 30, you know, 3080, and it, was, it ends up being, you know, 3060 or 3040. All of these will move today, guaranteed. But just to teach you how to, you know, how to look at this and what it means, this is what effectively the strategy is, is looking at. And so if you were to put this on, your interim P&L lines are going to be shown here, and you can see the dates here, and I would urge everyone to study this. What is important here are the deltas. So we start here at circle one, and we take a look at the right now line, which is right here. And this is, this is why this is important, and this is why today matters, is when they put this, this trade on, when they, they do all of this, what's effectively happening here is that we are now establishing a delta that's going to be somewhere around the 55 to 60. Now, historically, they've been 54 to 59, according to my notes, over the last year, uh, year plus. When they do this, uh, today's value, just given the, the, the 
BMO, the before market open numbers, suggests around a 58 delta. Might be a little less, might be a little more, but it's going to be right in this particular area. So when they put these new trades on, this is the new delta. And if remember, if they're collapsing towards zero, then they've got to basically come up with that 58 delta. And so that's uh, one way to, to view this. The other way to view it is if they're collapsing towards one, they've still got to get to it, but they get to it to, in a different direction. So all, all things equal, we're usually in uh, the, the zone that has the out of the money area uh, when, we, when they roll, not always, but uh, one of the ways that they adjust for that is showing here. So, you know, basically um, the new structure is this, it produces a minus 58 delta. And then from here to here, what we're basically looking at is, I went to the website this morning, they've got, this fund has about 15 billion under management, uh, taken at that 3850. Um, they're roughly looking to roll into about 38,000 contracts, all things being equal, could be higher. Don't think it'll be much lower, but it's going to be notionally right around 38,000 uh, uh, contracts in general. At a 58 delta, that means uh, basically they, they're going to have a shortfall or they're going to need to come up with about a 22,000 contract equivalent in the overall deltas. And so historically what JPM does is they, they buy a deep in the money zero DTE. And in this case, perhaps it'll be all 22,000. You know, again, it could be more, it could be less. The structure is what's important here. And this is to provide positive delta to this negative going delta. So if you buy a deep in the money call, your deltas are already one. If you buy 22,000 contracts, you now have 22,000 delta. That 22,000 delta, you know, times the, uh, divided by the 58 that you need to come up with equals the notional value of the fund. And so that's what we end up with right here. It removes the impact for today doesn't remove it necessarily, and this was the comment that I was making earlier, uh, doesn't necessarily remove it across the weekend because what effectively happens is, is this vaporizes today. So the market has got to come up with 58,000 times the number of contract or 58 delta times the number of contracts, and they need to absorb this. And we often have seen market on closed numbers. If you use TOS, for instance, you'll get a MOC at about 350, uh, which will you know, be a fairly significant number, uh, generally in the several billions of dollars. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see how that, uh, that comes to, to play. So the so what in all this is, you know, we've been pinning around 3835, which has been completely expected. We, we've been talking about this, we've been tracking this for a long time, and um, uh, I would urge everyone to, to pay attention to that. Um, watching these big strikes uh, can, can help you understand what's going to happen. We, we know a lot of folks who bought butterflies or bought broken wings and have been playing this very, very well, condors, and have been, been doing very, very well on this. Uh, there is a debate, and I, I want to highlight this, on the impact of the roll on the day of the roll. Uh, some experts out there, they hand wave the impact and they say it's completely hedged and negated. Uh, other experts warn that at the end of the day and into the expire that that negative delta that you saw right here, this negative delta, uh, that was hedged in the zero DT is now vaporized. Now remember, this is because they, they buy that zero DTE, it offsets this, but what happens at 4.01 p.m. and literally what happens as, as we, we go forward, if it's not properly hedged by the, uh, the market makers or the dealers, then uh, we could have some, some impact into the, the weekend. And then couple that with a three-day weekend, it's going to be interesting to see what the futures do uh, when, when they open up. Uh, either way, uh, we do expect that the pinning around the 3835 is done. And so after today, uh, we think the markets are free to do whatever. The current structures right now to uh, point to a bit more volatility in the first few days and over the weekend, uh, we'll post some things here to uh, help you understand where, where we think things are going to go, especially after the dust settles today. So, so with that, um, I know a little bit longer than normal. I uh, hope you stuck uh, to the end here. Uh, we think this is really interesting content. Um, if you have any questions or comments, come and join us at GamEdge.us. Follow us on Twitter at GamEdges with an S. And then here on YouTube, of course, if, uh, like today's content, smash that like button. Let me know immediately. And then subscribe because when you subscribe, you get notified when we post something. So with that, I bid you farewell. Thanks for hanging in there. Uh, may, I hope you've had a great year and looking forward to uh, uh, working with all of you next year. Take care.